You remember, in episode number two, we talked about cancer stages. There, we mentioned that the higher cancer is graded based on criteria that we have discussed, the more difficult to treat it is. I will put a link to episode number two so that you can go back and watch it if you need to. There, we also mentioned that since high-grade tumors are difficult to treat, with no doubt, early detection systems of cancer is so important not only for diagnosis but also for successful treatment of the disease. This is why now many cancer research activities are directed not only towards treatment of cancer but also towards development of new systems that detect cancer at early stages. Here in this episode we will be talking about early cancer detection systems and tests for several cancer types. We will be breaking it down in several parts so that you can focus on your cancer type of interest. So now let's go ahead and have a closer look. Early diagnosis of prostate cancer. The digital rectal examination, DRE, is recommended annually for men at age starting from 50 annually, plus the PCA blood test. The PCA blood test is a test that detects a specific protein called prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, that is produced by the prostate gland. The higher PCA level is, the more likely the man has prostate cancer. Like digital rectal examination, it is also recommended annually for men at age starting from 50. We will be later talking more in the prostate cancer specific episode about prostate cancer development and progression, but I'd like to mention here briefly about some studies related to possible prostate cancer biomarkers. Biomarkers are molecular indicatives for certain disease. Within the last 10 or 15 years, many research studies were focused on identifying biomarkers for prostate cancer and for other cancer types as well. One of the biomarkers for early prostate cancer detection, which is now being irregularly used in clinical diagnosis, is the prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, as we have just discussed. Studies have shown that genetic changes in androgen receptor, a gene that regulates the increase in number of prostate cells, or what we call as cell proliferation. Natural variations of this gene in different human populations have found to be resulted in differences in prostate cancer risk in different human populations. One gene I like to add here as well is one of that myself and my former group found during my doctoral studies, which is CRAP-P2. CRAP-P2 stands for Cellular Retinoic Acid Binding Protein 2, which regulates the retinoic acid metabolism. Retinoids are related chemically to vitamin A and known to play key roles in cell proliferation, cell differentiation, and natural cell death, or as we call apoptosis. In our study, we have found CRAP-P2 to be a potential diagnostic marker for prostate cancer. There have been also other genes identified that may be indicators for prostate cancer progression, but not for early diagnosis. Those molecules, molecules are NF-kappa-B, which is a very important molecule that regulates the transcription of DNA, which is the first step of gene expression. And if kappa B has been found to be not only molecular target for prostate cancer chemoprevention, but also for treatment of advanced disease. COX-2 is a cellular enzyme which its increase in numbers, or as we call overexpression, found to be co in correlation with prostate cancer progression. Interleukin-6, or IL-6, 
is part of the immune system and is one of the most important mediators of fever and of acute phase response. It has been found to be involved in prostate cancer progression. BCL2, or also called B-cell lymphoma 2, is one of the proteins that regulates the natural cell death, or as we call apoptosis. It has been shown to be involved in prostate cancer progression, but not in early stages of cancer development. As you can see, there are many detection systems and tests already in use to detect cancer at early stages. Please make sure you check them with your doctor to ensure an early detection of possible cancer, which may lead to a successful treatment of the disease. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next episode. So we hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more cancer videos. And once you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell so that you can be informed when we publish our new video. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next episode. Take care.